Section 12.4 is about curvature, and just kind of to give you an idea of what's going on is, um, if you were designing a road or something else of that nature, um, you would want to avoid curves that are too sharp. So what this section we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at how sharp curves are. Um, and so we're going to be talking about curvature. Um, and you've all been probably somewhere where the, shirt, the roads were a little bit too sharp. I know that in the mountains that's the way it feels a lot of the time, so you have to adjust speed limits and things like that. Um, so the first thing that we're actually going to talk about is we're going to talk about um, kind of an analog of what you did back in Chapter 2, probably, maybe Chapter 3, um, in Calc 1. Um, which is talking about how graphs are curved. So when we talk about curvature in, with regular functions, um, we're looking at um, derivatives, right? How steep or how flat a graph is is its derivative. So what we're going to be looking at in this section to start with is we're going to be looking at a unit tangent vector. Now, it is absolutely not my favorite notation, but your book is going to call this capital T of the variable multi. Not my favorite. Um, but what we're going to do is when we find a vector that's the derivative, that's our, our tangent vector, right? Um, and to make it a unit vector, we would divide it by the length of that particular vector. So that's all a tangent unit vector is, is it's the position vector's derivative um, divided by the magnitude at that point. So we're going to find one of these. Not at all difficult over the last section that we were working with. We're going to find the unit tangent vector to the curve at the given point. Um, our position curve, our position vector for this one is 3 cosine t 2 sine t, and we're going to be working with this at t equal to negative pi halves. All right, so first things first, we're going to find a derivative, right? So what's the derivative of 3 cosine t? Negative 3 sine t, mm -hmm. and the derivative of 2 sine t? 2 cosine t. And we're interested in particular at the point at t equals to negative pi halves. So we're going to evaluate that vector at negative pi halves. So negative 3 sine of negative pi halves and then 2 cosine of negative pi halves. So what's the first component? I shouldn't have written it quite like that, but this is bad notation. Give me a second. Let me fix it. All right. What was it, Caleb? Three and then zero. Right, wait a minute, negative pi halves, the sine value is negative 1, so that's giving my positive 3 with a negative 3 at the beginning, and then for the cosine, I'm at 0. What is the magnitude then at that particular point? It's not 9, but 3, yeah, it's 3. So, the unit tangent vector, capital T of small t, is the vector 3, 0 divided by 3, which is the vector 1, 0 on this one. Oops. Uh, 
And if you sort of think visually about what this graph is, do you know what this graph looks like? What happened when we dealt with signs? And it's an ellipse. Why is it an ellipse and not a circle? Do you know, James? Yeah. Yeah, so sine and cosine, when they're in the x and the y components, produce an ellipse or a circle. The reason this one's an ellipse is because the coefficients in front of them are different. So imagine from a, a visual perspective, and I'm not going to make you draw anything in this section, but from a visual perspective, this makes sense. That's not a very good ellipse, but pretend for a moment. So if you're at negative pi halves, you're right here. Right? So it makes sense that your tangent line is going to be, in essence, a horizontal tangent, right? Your unit tangent vector here is a horizontal tangent. You guys with me? The position, it's going like this around the circle too. Oops, last one's wrong. There we go. So this is my tangent right there. That's not what I want. This is. So there's the unit tangent you're seeing in red. Okay. All right. So how does this relate to sharpness? Well, the rate of change of the unit vector with respect to the arc length, the length of the curve, will give us a measure of sharpness. In particular, we're going to define what's called the curvature. The curvature K of a curve is the scalar quantity DTDS. Okay, that's a derivative, right? The rate of change of T with respect to the arc length S. And just a little bit of derivation, we're not going to do this whole thing, but a little bit of derivation. If we were to take the derivative of T with respect to T, its own variable, that would be DT, capital T, dt little t, which would be the same thing as taking dt ds times ds and then again dt. So the curvature, that's terrible, let's try that again, which is defined to be dt ds becomes the, ma the uh, derivative of t with respect to t over ds dt. All right, one more remembrance for you. the definition of arc length, which you'll need because it's part of this formula, is that S of t for arc length is the integral from a to t of the square root of f prime of, we're going to change the variable to u so we can work with a different variable than the t since t is our upper limit of integration, squared g prime of u squared and h prime of u squared dt, I'm sorry, du. And if you'll notice, this piece right here 
had another name as we've been working with it. Do you remember what it was? The square root of all of those pieces squared? Magnitude. That's the magnitude. Yeah, it's the magnitude of R. Prime. Yeah, prime. Thank you. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, ds dt, that is the derivative of this quantity right here, would simply be the magnitude of r prime. This piece right there. Can we go check that last page? You bet. Let me write one more line after this, and then we'll stop, okay? Let me know when you're ready, Joel. Okay. All right, so we've derived a whole bunch of pieces, um, and let me put one piece together and then tell you where this ends. So the curvature becomes the derivative of t with respect to t divided by the magnitude of the derivative of r. And that, that's one of the definitions then. There will be a proof later in the book. It's not in this section because we don't have the tools to make it easy to work with. But another version of this that we're going to work with in this section, and we'll prove it later, is that this is the cross, pro that the t prime of t is the cross product of r prime and r double prime and then divided by r prime of t cubed. Notice it is cubed on the bottom, not, not, not by itself. And yet, one more version of this that we're going to use is this is the second derivative of f <coughs> when we're dealing with a two-dimensional function instead of dealing with something in vector form. And then I've got 1 plus f prime of x squared to the quantity 3 halves so in particular these are the two formulas we're going to be using to actually work with finding curvature in this section and we'll stop there for today <coughs>